So you've seen Halloween from 1978 mm. and Halloween Kills for 2021. Yes. So the first and the last. Yes. And they're all so fucking stupid. What did you think of the first one? Horror tropes. Well, oh, yeah. actually, no, no, no. You wanted to talk 15 minutes or something about something. Oh, you wanted me to summarize you. Summarize me. You. <laughs> oh, God, this stupid freaking show. All right, look. This is the worst show ever. It's just so All right, st- what makes it bad? It's just so stupid. Stupid. Okay, so here's the thing. You are it's not just... interested in thrillers, <sighs> horror, gore, murder, nothing. I'm you're, really not. You're not interested in any of that. Like today we're gonna so... today we're talking about like my my opinion. I think all a lot of horror films are just idiotic. I really do. I think they're so stupid. So I think that like I, I'm gonna give my personal take on all of the horror genres because i've seen most of them if not all of them mm-hmm. so i'm gonna give you my personal hopefully comedic take after ellen summarizes after you. ellen summarizes the stupid show it's about <laughs> a guy who's a stalker who's killing people and getting away with it and it's just the stupidest shit in the world but okay okay so go ahead i'll ask questions as we go so summarize okay. you or, so let's yeah. be fair i've only seen it all the way through once so give the audience so, a brief summary of what the show is about and then go into so the show is about joe okay who's a little unhinged doesn't have a healthy relationship with relationships doesn't fully get what makes them healthy definitely thinks he's a catch and would treat a woman right as long as it doesn't turn sour, which it tends to. And if it turns sour, what happens? The girls end up dying. It's always for different reasons. He always feels the need to kill them for a different reason. But he kills them all. He he never intends to but he to kills start them with. All. Yeah. And it's he actually does the killing or Yes. Oh, dear God. So, season one, we start with Guinevere Beck. Oh, dear God. He's really into this girl because she's beautiful and she is interested in books. Okay. That's really... Oh, I remember this. That's really all it takes. He's in a bookstore. It all changed when I saw you. You. <laughs> yeah. He, he's... It's a... This is the stupidest What's the word? Shit in the world. A l- libriophile? A li- what? Oh, he's a bibliophile. He like, loves yeah. books. Yeah, he loves books. So the fact that she has entered his bookstore already makes her the most interesting woman he's ever been with. So he dates her, wins her over. Then, in my opinion, it takes her a little bit too long for her to clue in on his crazy antics. Okay. Because what he does is he tends to try to remove obstacles in their relationship so she kills off this guy that she was sleeping he kills off a guy she was sleeping with before he dated and he all did it he did it because of you yeah he's trying to make her life better because he doesn't think she has what it takes to make her life better so he removes obstacles he's gonna step in and fix it for yeah you <laughs> yeah, so in the end, he's killed a couple of her friends. Wait, we should say spoiler alert because if you haven't seen the show, which if you're watching the show, you're probably not going to watch it. But yeah, I'm just saying it's stupid. Anyway, so yeah, go ahead. Kills her boyfriend. Yep. Kills a toxic friend who, okay. who he thinks is a bad friend. The girl. So she starts to clue in on he's odd. Something's off with him. So she finds, I can't remember. It's been like three years since I last watched the first season, but like. He, she finds like teeth in a box in it in the ceiling panel above oh, so his not toilet. All, not all. Not only is he a serial killer, he keeps teeth. He he, he kept something. All right. Anyway, so how does the season end? Um. So he and she finds out what's wrong with him. He locks her in a box, and at the end of the day, he realizes she's never gonna love him. The only thing he could do to stay safe is to kill her. Actually, I think she gets out. And tries to kill him, but it, he ends up, she gets caught. 
So she gets got. Yeah. So at the end of the season, how does he kill her? Oh gosh, did he just I, blunt force trauma? Maybe oh, gosh. he didn't beat the fuck out of her. Dude, I don't. I don't think her death happened on camera. I could be wrong. I don't remember. All right, anyway. Anyway, so right at the very the last few scenes, um, we find out that this other girlfriend that he had before Beck that we've seen in flashbacks mm. throughout the season, um, he thought she was dead. He thought he accidentally like killed her, like it was like, like a manslaughter thing or something. So mm. he he like I think he buried her, and thought that was it. In the last scene of the show, she comes back. She's like, oh, hey, Joe. He's like, oh, I don't know where my world's going. I've lost everything that I thought I knew. But that all changed when I saw you. No, that's not how the first season I just, ends. I feel like it's going to be. Anyway, anyway, second season. So, so second season, he has his ex-girlfriend who he thought he'd already killed once. Comes back into his life. He's like, oh, shit. Now I've got a dead girlfriend. I've got an ex-girlfriend who comes back and is trying to cause me trouble. So he moves. He changes his name, moves from a New York to L.A., tries to start a whole new life. Okay. So he starts dating love. Yeah, her name's kind of weird. But her brother's name is 40. So what are you going to do? So he starts dating her. God damn los angeles los angeles Los <laughs> oh my gosh los no 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 angeles. so they're from a los rich angeles. family and she runs los this angeles. family-owned company what's the plural form of los angeles los angeles just call him an angel los angeles okay angels of los angeles well there okay. there are angels they're all dead so anyway um so yeah so her family owns this place it's like a cafe, bookstore type Oh, I thing. remember this place. It's called a Navrin. I remember this. Do you know why it's called a Navrin? Be- because they're novels in the book? Because it's Sorry? Nirvana spelled backwards. I hate this show <laughs> so much. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. So- you know what would be a great idea for a bookstore? A Navrin. What's that mean? Nirvana backwards. Oh, shit. Let's write that and make it a show. We we write so much better than these people. Like, really, really, really. No, I think it was intentionally written for these people to just be despisable. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, he 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 falls in love with love. Love. They just. Oh, he falls in love with love. They decide they don't want to say I love you. They want to say I wolf you. I what? I wolf you. They don't want to say I love you. They think that that's too mainstream they decide to say i wolf you instead <laughs> it gets better, and better what does that mean that's just their word for love they're stupid <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so they go through this whole thing he ends up killing like some drug dealer who tried to rape someone in his apartment complex and yeah he he's trying to live a better life. He doesn't want to be a murderer, but oh just, yeah, of course he's only killed six people at this things point. Things just keep happening to him. That's what that that's what how he is. You know, making it make sense. I don't want to kill. I had to kill. So circumstances that beyond be his beyond his control have caused him to continue his lifestyle. So he's trying to hide all this from love, and then at the very end, like he. He finds out that love was in on it and like trying to kill people too. Yeah, so he finds out love has killed a few people in her day. Love finds out he's a murderer, locks him up in a box. He's like, "Oh shit, she is about to she is about to like air all my dirty laundry. She is going to rat me out." And then she's just like, "But you're just like me. I love you." And he goes, "Oh shit." So he thinks she's crazy. So even though he's a murderer, <laughs> he doesn't want to be with a murderer. Okay. So he's like, yeah, we're not going to be together. And I don't remember what happens here because she she threatened him or somehow. So he changed his mind and decided to pretend that he still loved her. So they go to this party and at the end of the party, it, it turns out like he's like, 
all right, jig is up. I don't want to be with you. So he goes to kill her. And she goes, she drops the bomb. Oh my God, I'm pregnant. You can't kill me. So he doesn't kill her because he is a family man. He wants a good, he wants a family for himself because hmm. he didn't grow up with a good one. I hate this show so much. So yeah, so they moved to the suburbs of California. And then he sees a girl next door and it all changed when I, he saw you. Yeah, so yeah, it, it kind of leads into season three, making us think that he now has another focus. Another poor girl. Oh, by the way, Love killed Candace, who had come back and was trying to like out him for all of his stuff. No idea who that is. Don't care. Candace was the ex-girlfriend who came back from the dead. Oh, God. Oh, yes. So Love killed her. Okay, cool. Got her out of the way. Anyway. So, yeah. So in season three comes up and you think it's going to be all about that neighbor. Not one second of it. No. The whole first episode... They 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 start to hint at it. They they kiss and everything. They would have probably had an affair if it had been left to go on longer. But love gets smart and love just kills the next one ever. Just kills her. Nice. Yeah. So they spend the rest of the season trying to cover that up, trying to frame other people, make it look like oh she ran away, oh this person wanted her dead, oh yeah, and then okay so this neighbor, this neighbor was an anti vaxxer um, and his kids gave their son, the son that they had because she was pregnant, mm-hmm. the anti-faxer neighbor kids gave their son, uh, what was it? It was like measles. So he was in the hospital for measles. And when the guy comes back to admit, hey, look, I'm sorry, we're just not vaxxers. I'm sorry that like it was so severe, but I'm glad everyone's okay. And she's like, yeah, it's all good. So she beats this guy with the head like over the head but she's like oh i'm trying to turn over a new leaf i'm not trying to kill people so they keep him in this cage until they like can be convinced that he's like not gonna rat them out because someone else is missing in town you know if he rats them out that they even locked him up they're gonna have fingers pointed at them you know Mm -hmm. so yeah so they they hold him down there until until they can research him enough and get something on his closet like a skeleton in his closet so like they're like now we know your secret you know our secret. We're just going to... It's all going to be fine. But when they fa- found out what his secret is, he didn't even know what his secret was. Like, his wife had done something kind of really shady and scandalous. And when he found out what his wife had done, he committed suicide. <laughs> so they framed the neighbor's murder. Framed him for the neighbor's murder. And then it he it looked like he committed suicide because he did. Yeah. They just put him in his own house with a... So how did season three end? So season three, he... <clears throat> this whole time, he fell for someone that he worked with at the library. And Love was just like, man, you really don't love me, do you? So she was going to try to, like, go crazy on Joe and be like, I'm saving our marriage. But he gets her first and burns the house down while she's inside. And yeah, Skips town, wrote wrote a fake letter of admission for for her saying, oh, yeah, I killed Joe in a fit of mad, passionate rage or whatever. And then she made it look like she committed suicide, burned herself up in her house. I hate this show. So he's on the run. He gave his, his, their child to this gay couple in town who wanted kids. So he gave up his child. So what is what you're saying is killed that, love and is now on the run looking for this other woman that he fell in love with. I hate this show <laughs> so much. Anyway, if you want to watch that show, I will personally judge you. <laughs> and uh, moving on. And if you didn't listen to any of that and you're still watching, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's you're, interesting. If you're watching it for my comedic input. Thank you. You didn't have a whole lot of input. You were just like, this sucks. This sucks. <laughs> it's this such a stupid sucks. show. Oh, my God. It's so stupid. Dude, I think it would be fun for you and I to watch it. Once the show is done airing, once it's all out there, just watch it all. I'd be sitting there and be like, <laughs> oh, I killed somebody else. Dude. Anyway. All right. So now we're going to get into the... The point of the episode, which is to talk about the horror films, horror tropes, whatever, 
And we're going to talk about my personal opinion of every single horror trope. <laughs> because you don't like any horror I, movies. No, that's not true. I like some. You think I'm, they're stupid. I'll give you my genuine opinion of all of them. So let's go ahead and you you start going through the list. Okay. We'll start with Halloween. What do you oh, think of Michael Myers and Halloween? fucking hate. No, no, no. Start with how many of these movies you've actually seen. Two. Two. Mm. So I know you've seen Halloween Kills, the most recent one. Mm. Which one did you watch? The first one. So you've seen Halloween from 1978 mm. and Halloween Kills for 2021. Yes. So the first and the last. Yes. And they're all so fucking stupid. What did you think of the first one? The first one was all right, actually. I didn't I didn't mind the first one. The first, it should have It ended... wasn't too overdone, you know. Right. Uh, the first one, they should have left it at 3. And what I mean by that You've never seen 3. They should have left it at 2 if that's where you're well, going no, with no, no. it. Well, no, no. They should have done 3 movies. And what I mean by that is the first one, you have Michael Myers, you have this freaked out mental guy from mental hospital who's wearing a mask backwards. You have all these crazy, whatever. It's, it's Inside a, out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like you have this crazy guy who's killing people, right? And then you, you, you kind of dive into the story a little bit more. You dive into the fact that he's like made a deal with the devil and all this crazy shit. And you, you get an idea of who Mike Myers is. And then, like, second film, you dive into the characters a little bit more. You dive into, like, oh, this guy is, like, really freaking crazy. He starts killing people again. Shit goes crazy. But then people kind of figure out a weakness. Like, they find out, like, oh, Mike, like, he has this one thing that, like, gets him. Like, it bothers him. And he and he stops. And then the third movie is them overcoming it. it is them, like getting michael myers and killing him or but don't you understand that for this series particularly like he can't be stopped that's part of what makes but it so that's freaky stupid it but it doesn't horror is not meant to have but a if he, positive but happy you, right but if he can never be stopped then it should just end it, the third movie should just end with him killing everybody he's not even in the third movie oh it doesn't <laughs> not real the movie okay I hate this series so much because it's the same movie over and over and over and over and over again. Nothing has changed from the first to the second to the last. And it's the same fucking lady in it, which she didn't do anything the entire goddamn movie besides sit in the hospital and go, Halloween dies tonight or whatever, like evil dies tonight. It's like so freaking stu- the stupidest dialogue in the history of dialogue, a kindergartner could have like evil nice tonight. Like a kindergartner could have wrote that shit. I'm pretty sure that they did write that. Like they, they vandalized buildings and definitely like graffitied the wall with that line. It's so stupid. <laughs> it is so idiotic. And then I mean, like, she knows that she's not gonna kill him. But like, it needs to end. Like he needs to be killed, or he needs to win. Like in a, in a hero, they're writing him in a hero arc. So the hero experience, like in a typical hero arc, you have like the journey. Okay. The shortened version of the hero arc is you have the journey, the fall, the climax and the resolution. Right. Mm -hmm. So Michael is like, he's just always on the fucking journey. (laughs) Like, can we just see something? This movie, the, the last I think the one. point of these is to see how many different ways he can kill people. It's just stupid. Like, no one cares. People keep watching it. They do care. Idiots. They wouldn't keep making them if they didn't. He's the stupidest villain ever. He's wearing a Star Trek mask backwards and he stabs people. <laughs> Shoot him in the freaking face. Cut his head off and call it a day. Like, I don't... Yeah, they need to cut his head off. Laurie Strode had it right in Halloween H2O, where she freaking cut his head off. Now, it turned out he had put his mask on someone else, so he survived that. But she knows what it needs to be done. I hate that. Just kill him. It's been nine movies. No <laughs> one gives a shit. Where's my phone? Do I have my phone? Can I look up? Do you have your phone on you? Nine plus the reboots, yeah. Can you look up the actual? Do you have a phone on you? Can I you, don't think so. No. I was about to say, can you look up like the Rotten Tomatoes review on this freaking movie to just see? I don't have my phone on me. You're fine. You're fine. So, no, uh, let's see here. What's the Rotten Tomato? What do you What do you think it is? 
on Halloween Kills. What do you think the Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, twenty eight. But you want to you want to hate this movie even more. You want to hate you even more. I hate the movie. I well, hate it. Do you want to so hate much. it more? Yes. Do you remember that kid who the boyfriend of the granddaughter? Mm. Who he like killed by stabbing him through the neck on the banister? Oh yes. That actor was a main character in you season three. I hate, I knew you would hate it both. I knew I hate it. I knew you would hate them both more for that. <laughs> anyway. So it's a thirty nine on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, that's higher than I said. And he got, and all the critics are like <laughs> Okay, so here's some of the top reviews. First of all, it's like it thinks it has an idea. But it would have been nice to see it. <laughs> Another one is it's entertaining, although sometimes in a way it's not meant to be. Another one was a film so com- a film that so completely sucks that the vitality out of John Carpenter and Deborah Hill's original vision that one would be tempted to call it dis- desecration if that didn't make it sound like more fun than it actually is. See, here's the thing. I think the characters were interesting because they had developed them in the previous movie. I think it's a continuation of the same night, which is what made one and two successful. Mm. And I think that it was really cool having them bring all these characters from the first one back. They had really good concepts going for them, but they focused too much on minor little things like... Who cares if he killed half the townspeople in the park? Who cares about these other inmates that escaped? Like, that contributed nothing to the story for me. Like, they spent 20 minutes hunting down this other guy who they thought it was Michael. Dude, you know that's not Michael. That guy is like a foot shorter than Michael. That guy is fat. That guy has hair. Michael doesn't have hair. So here's a here's a very interesting review, and I I do actually kind of stand by this one because he's, he's like very love hate with it. So here's the actual review. I have a very love I have a very strong love hate relationship with the Halloween franchise. I think the original Halloween from 1970 is a very solid slasher flick, but it also feels very dated today. After the endless number of mostly poor sequels and even the remake by Rob Zombie, which another sequel in parentheses, which I very much disliked. I slowly started not caring about the franchise as a whole. Then they decided to release a direct sequel to the original film back in 2018, Mm -hmm. ignoring all the films that came after the surprisingly struck gold, or that surprisingly struck gold in my opinion. 2018's Halloween isn't a great film by any means, but it brought back the feel to the original, and I may even say that I prefer it to the original. For the reason alone, I was intrigued as to where the hollow, where the, wait, he kind of, his grammar's horrible here. I was intrigued as to where they would take this series next. Halloween Kills is now playing in theaters, and here's why I believe it's pretty much as good as 2018's Halloween, for different reasons. Picking up immediately after the events of the previous film, Laurie Strode, played by once again Jimmy the Curtis, is being rushed to the hospital, spending a majority film in the hospital. The film focuses on a number of plots to further this story while she is laid up. More than half of this film is devoted to a storyline that involves survivors of the original 1978 film, and that is easily my favorite portion of the film. Mm-hmm. It was mine too, honestly. It was nice. Um, even though most of the di- uh, most of their dialogue was very clunky and overwritten, I also agree. Mm-hmm. Evil dies tonight. It's so stupid. Anyway, many performers from the previous films also will make a return and have bigger roles to play here. Mm-hmm. But it really came down to the simplicity of this movie that won me over. There are very few locations here, aside from the hospital, a few scenes in the streets, a police precinct, and some homes. This is a very confined movie. Halloween Kills exists simply to further the murder count of Michael Myers, so that when Halloween Ends comes out next year, the fi- finale of the Michael Myers character will feel earned. Due to this, there are many instances where it feels like the writers didn't have anything for the characters to say. The word evil is said far too many times throughout this film, referring to Michael, to the point where I actually began to find it annoying. Everyone did, dude. 
Rather than be in terror like the characters were, the repetitiveness of the dialogue in this film actually hurt the enjoyment of the otherwise great entry, in my opinion. When it comes down to it, everyone just wants to see Michael Myers deliver on clever, deliver on clever kills. If you're going into these films hoping for something more meaningful, I think that it's a mistake right off the bat. Looking at this film from the lens, it's a terrific film. I will say that cinematically it's a very pleasing film like the the actual cinematography and the direction from like an overall production standpoint i think is is a very well being in entertainment i think it's very well photographed and very cinematically done film the cameras were right the colors were right the schemes were right like every kind of little note they had to it the fire and the little lens flares that they had and the angles that they used to to depict drama. I think that was a very good depiction of it, but I, I do think it, other, otherwise it was a horrible film. Anyway. So, um, again though, it's very hard to pick this film apart when it's very clearly just trying to be one thing. And it does exactly that in the end. Jamie Lee Curtis is solid. Once again, uh, I agree with that. Are we talking about tropes or are we just getting into cinematography now? No, we're going to talk about it. anyway. Um, this year's Halloween. So basically it's all coming down to, so, this is a middle film between 2018 and the final one. So apparently they're doing one last one. This is it. Like Michael Myers ends like whether he dies or whether he wins. I'll never stop. I'm just saying there's, a, there's a, the, the next film is called Halloween ends. So, and then they'll, they'll bring back a fourth iteration of what happened after the first. Two, so that, that's what well, it is. Yeah, true. But that, but the, you should watch it, but it ends, but it ends on 10. It's an even number. No, it, it'll it'll end ten with Michael Myers in it. I'm just saying. Anyway, so I think my opinion of this film, I think the original was done well. Everything in between was freaking horrible. No, that's not true. Meh. And then this one was just the newest one was just trash. But but if you're looking at it from like a continuation from the previous one, I've never seen the previous one, so I don't know. So if it, I guess if you're looking at it from a continuation standpoint, it could be pretty good, and then it leads up, it leads you directly to Halloween ends. So you just know. have to watch them as one, two, four, five, six. All right. So then pretend four, five, and six don't exist, and watch one, two, seven, eight. Okay. So I guess as Halloween as a whole, the whole franchise, Mike Myers and all that. I'm Can gonna, I talk? Yeah. At, hold on. Out of one to ten, I'm gonna give it a <laughs> three. Right, moving on. Or yeah, moving on. Okay. Okay. Next, Freddy. It's dated, but it's not bad. It's the same era. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much to say about Freddy. <clears throat> I've only seen it once. Eh. I'm gonna say, as far as films go, I'm gonna give it like a four. I think it's better than Halloween. Yeah, I don't think it's better than the original. Have though. you seen any of the originals? Of the original. Like, there's been a remake of Nightmare on Elm Street, but have you seen any of the originals? You have. That's what I saw first for most of them, most of the old ones. Okay. So I'm going to give it a four. I like the premise better. Hmm. So, okay. Okay. Um. Friday the 13th. Jason. Jason. Um... I think the idea is kind of stupid. I think it's more of a knockoff of what is the idea of Jason? Mm-hmm. I think they're. I think they were trying to like. I think they were trying to knock off like they were trying to get the idea behind like Halloween and Mike Myers. Like Freddy. Yeah. The reason I like Freddy so much is because it was like it's Nightmare on Elm Street. Like oh, what super scary. And like it's got the slasher hands, you get the fucked up face. Jason was in a mask again, and he was doing the same kind of stuff that Mike Myers did. Like I just, I, I don't, I think they just wanted to cap- capitalize off of that, you know, that pop because Halloween took off. Like Halloween exploded when it first came out, and I think they just wanted to, they wanted to catapult themselves off the slasher films. And I think that, uh, so. It's all right. Well, I think I think what we need to do from now on is like ask, what do you know about the storyline? What what's the Jason storyline? 
about the storyline. Friday the 13th. Why is Jason different than just a... Sl- what makes him different than Michael Myers? He's not just a slasher. What puts him out? What's his story? Well, so he only kills teenagers, right? Yes, at Camp... Camp Crystal Lake? Yeah. Sure. Camp Crystal Lake, yeah. Because Jason was... Yeah, so he he would only kill at this camp, and it was only teenagers. Um, it was pretty much anybody, but they really just have teenagers there. But, no, the whole point of the movie was that, like, after it happened... Like they were not trying to reopen this camp, mm-hmm. and because of Jason, he's just like I'm gonna kill everybody, <laughs> and yeah. and but but once again, like it's a slasher film, and I I understand the point of a slasher film, I get it, but I think that they were trying to capitalize off of the Halloween success mm-hmm. because once again, it's, it's yes, it's teenagers, it's at a different location, it's it's a different kind of like stereo or character type. But realistically, when you boil it down, it's Mike Myers. It's it's a it's a guy killing people because he wants to kill people. Yeah. Like and see, and you know, Friday the Thirteenth isn't my favorite either. But like, I they... would actually rate Friday the Thirteenth lower. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. Good. No, <laughs> you would rate it lower. Go. I would I would give it like a two. It's just not good. I don't think it's that good in my opinion. I think it's more up to date than the original, but I just well, yeah, the storyline was made recently. The storyline's like a direct copy. Like you change the names, you change the demographic, and it's the same shit. Like, well, so they based American Horror Story the season called 1984 off the camp trope, and that is my favorite season. Well, there's been so many of that show. There's been so many shows and movies that have done like the camp, like slasher horror. I think 1984 of that show was the horror. best was the best camp themed horror of anything I've ever seen. Oh yeah, we got to say horror cuz it's not horror. It's horror. Have we been saying horror? Yeah, we've been saying horror <laughs> cuz we don't we don't no, no American. Dude, no one has noticed. No one pronounces the horror. Just take the context, dude. They yeah. hear us. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, next. Chucky. Uh, Chucky's pretty scary. Like, the the original Chucky was actually pretty freaky. I'm going to give that one like... Hi. I'm going to give that one like a five. Like, it's average. Yeah. It's a, it's a solid, like... Chucky has aged well. If you've yeah. seen those recently, it has aged pretty well. The newer ones are kind of shitty, but the but the original Chucky was actually... It's pretty scary. It's a doll, and it's like... It's just like... Actually, that kind of scared dolls for me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't want to look at you. Well, see, the middle ones in the franchise kind of dipped a little. Yeah. But I think the ones in the more recent years, like the show, um, Colt Chucky... Those, they stepped it up. I think, yeah. I think the franchise is back on an upswing. Chucky's been one that's actually been opinion. pretty good. Yeah. I, I think that Chucky's been around. It's stayed around and it's done a really good And it's been job. the same guy doing his voice since the beginning. Right, yeah, it hasn't changed. So, yeah, so, that was yeah, a good I, one. I, Chucky's not a bad one. I, I give it a middle of the road. I give it a five. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you this one. No. Tell me about the Conjuring franchise. Oh, it's the best. It's like the only horror series he it's, actually It's likes. the absolute best. But here's the deal. The Conjuring franchise includes all of the associated Conjurings. Mm-hmm. Like, they're and, all different villains. They're all different villains, but like Annabelle is technically part of the Conjuring series. It's the franchise. You mm-hmm. have Annabelle, you have La Rosiona, you have The Nun, you have... La Rosiana. Or what's the one? That's not even a word. What's the La Llorona? La Llorona. Yeah, La Llorona. Annabelle. Annabelle returns. Annabelle comes home. Conjuring. Conjuring, Conjuring one. Conjuring one. Conjuring two. Conjuring three. Uh, Crooked man's coming. Crook. No. The nun. The nun. Crooked man is coming. You ha- I mean, it's coming, but you have a couple more that are still out. There's gonna be like a nun too. <sighs> Anyway, there's like nine films that are part of the Conjuring world as of right now. And it's the best. It is the best executed franchise in horror history. 
Because in your opinion. No, in in anyone's opinion, it should be considered cinematically the best, storyline the best, and like dialogue. It every it takes every box. It's cinematically pleasing. The gore is not unnecessarily gory, but it's like scary. It's thriller. It's horror. It's it's exciting. It's like, oh, what's gonna happen next? And it actually scares the living shit out of you. Like Annabelle Return, Annabelle Comes Home was like the scariest horror movie. Horror movie. That's my favorite of all of them. It's the best because you see so many villains and it's scary as shit. Like you you see so many like demons and shit. Like it's just like Jesus, and that they have uh, uh what's mm -hmm. their name? What's their freaking names? Well, the Warrens. Mm -hmm. They're actually in that one. So, Ooh, but I like creation too. Our cre anyway, Annabelle creation. Yeah. Yeah. It, Did you even see that one? Yes, I've seen them all. You didn't so, watch that with me. So I'm just saying, like, I like The Conjuring and any of the associated franchise films. It cinematically, it's done well. The production is perfect. I mean, like, literally, they know how to capture capture every single element of fear, dr drama romance passion they know how to capture every single element of it and they do it so freaking well so as far as production value it's amazing storyline's great and it scares the living shit out of you and it's not really that gory you know what i mean like it's not super bloody it's not it's just like oh there's a, there's some blood but it's not like every movie is covered in it it's it's really done well i'm gonna give that an 10 out of 10. <laughs> okay, so since you're talking about blood, let's just let's just step on you're to You're going to go Saw. straight to Saw. Yeah, I knew yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think of Saw? Because you have seen a few of those with me I now. actually have seen quite a few Saws. Um, I think the premise of the show is is cool. Or the movie. I think the premise of the movies are good. I actually do like because the Because they continue and build on each other. Yeah, they build on each other. It's not just a stupid storyline that doesn't make sense. It's the one guy who is terminally... Like he was, it's one guy who was given a terminal disease, but like he's told he's going to die. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to give people an opportunity to either work together or not be selfish or learn from your mistakes and mm -hmm. acknowledge your mistakes and acknowledge your past. And if you would have done that, you would have lived and there would have been a way out of it. But it was like selfish or greed or. Yeah. Except that was the twist of the fourth was that <coughs> his partner in crime, he, the guy that he picked to carry on after him wasn't playing fair games. He wasn't doing what he's supposed to do. He was right. supposed to let people live and he was making unwinnable games. So that was a twist of the fourth movie. But otherwise, I think, <laughs> I think the go, yeah. The cat's paws under the door. She's like, what are you doing in there, guys? Cat's paws on the door and the dog's in my lap. So <laughs> uh, so I, I think that the movie is pretty well executed. I think cinematically it was pretty cool. The one with the lasers. Mm -hmm. Whereas like he faked him out with the shotgun and all that. That was pretty cool. And you find out like the people have been dead for years. And it was like the same. It was just a guy. That, anyway. You just talked about like two different ones there once, was two movies okay. that coincided like one like they've been dead for years and they the police found them and it already happened yeah but, so you thought that the police were finding their bodies right now but they were finding copycats because this was actually a prequel yeah to the whole thing <sighs> yeah mind blown so it's pretty cool um and you don't find out it was a prequel until like the very end yeah so which yeah, this is, is like which, his first kill so i think like the story of it the actual arc was is pretty awesome. Like I think that the the writing is really well done, and the only thing that I give it, like I take a, a couple points away, is because it's unnecessarily gory. Mm -hmm. Like make if you're gonna make like I'm one of those guys I love war films, so make them look real. Like if this really happened to somebody, what would that scientifically look like? Would blood actually splatter everywhere? And most scientists are like no, it it wouldn't actually. Hi. It wouldn't actually look like that. And so I think I'm going to give Saw an 8 out of 10. 
Man, and you hate those too, so that's <clears throat> it, fair. It's cinematically done well. Yeah, and okay. the storyline and the writing is done very well. Mm-hmm. I take a few points away because... They keep giving you twists. That's yeah, fair. exactly. The writing's good. And so I, 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 I understand production and I understand the value of horror films and, and thrillers. And I'm going to give it an eight because they don't need to have that much gore. So I'm, I'm going to take two points away. But yeah, okay. All right. We're going to wrap it up with the last three... They're th- my three. They're my <clears throat> favorites. So we're going to start with Final Destination. Uh, the, the first one was fantastic. The second one was... Because there's no villain in play, really. <clears throat> it's just death. Yeah. The, the, the first one... Was, no, it wasn't just death, though. The, the beauty of the first film was that you had no idea. You thought it was like a magical ability that this kid could see into the future and then you find out it's like he wasn't supposed to see the second one was like oh dude he was never supposed to see that shit like and this girl picked up on it and it's mm-hmm. like and it's like so then they start figuring it out that it's like death and they cheated well, death then, and, yeah but well then like you know how everybody it, death was coming <clears throat> back to get them because all these yeah. people were influenced by not being where they were supposed to be because they're witnessing the, the fallout of the first you know so that blew my mind. Yeah, it was like a domino effect. Yeah. The second one got a little confusing. Yes, and, it was more confusing. And then every co co everyone besides the one where they were on the bridge, and I forget which one. But that you was. never you never saw after the third one, did you? Yeah, because which one they they there was a thing that fell off the bridge and had to jump the bridge. It was the fourth one. The fourth was the race track. Yeah. The third was the roller coaster. The fifth was the bridge. You're, I've seen them all. You're right. I don't remember watching them all with you though. Yeah. So I. Anyway. Anyway, I think cinematically they're good. Mm-hmm. I think like the deaths and they're actually pretty accurate. Like the shit that happened probably would have happened in real life. Like it. Now, okay. Some of the like the car electrified and doing. It's pretty accurate, but it, it wouldn't look like that. Mm. But they have to make it a little more dramatic. So I understand that. I'm going to give the final destination. <clears throat> I actually enjoy those films. I'm going to give them a nine. Yay. Yeah, because I I, en- I, I enjoy those because they're more thriller than gore. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really like, it's more of a mystery. Who gets to make it and who doesn't. Yeah, well, it's, and it's more of a mystery, too, because they're trying to figure out how to beat it. You know, yeah. they're trying to figure out how to how to beat death, how to cheat death. And it's more, it's like more like, yeah, go like you're encouraging mm-hmm. that. So it, it's pretty cool. It's ri- it's ri- they're written in a hero arc and they're be- trying to beat death. So I, th- I think that's really cool. And then cinematically it's, it's done very well. So yeah, nine out of 10, I think it's a good film. Okay. Good series. And the movies get better. Like they're not, they don't just get mm-hmm. stagnant. They, they compound yeah. on each other. So, yeah. So this series is incomplete. <clears throat> You've only seen one of the two that they've done. Okay. Escape Room. Horrible. Horrible films. Really? I've seen both Escape Rooms, by the way. When did you see the first one? I had to explain it while you were watching the second yeah, one. Yeah, I've seen both. They are freaking horrible. It is the stupidest series ever. I think I the challenges them. are interesting. I think the movies are boring. Like the idea of the the idea of the game is interesting. Um, I think they just try to do too much. Like they try to do too many storylines for too many people all at the same time. And you get confused and you get lost. Hmm. Like the second one, the, the one we were just watched in the theaters, like the, the, it was cool. We thought this girl, like this girl came back that was in the first one. We thought she was dead. She's not, she's been captured. If they would have played on that plot, the whole film, the film would have been fantastic. Really? If they would have teased it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it, like can, They imagine, did tease it. No, no, no. Imagine that. I saw it coming before but, she but came But imagine out. that the whole point of the of the of the game is like built cat, capitalizing on the fact that somebody's alive and they know it the whole movie and they're trying to beat the game and figure out who it is. We didn't know who it was until we put all the pieces together and then we saw her in the room. Like you didn't know until that split second. I knew who it would have been if it was anybody. Like escape room, we always there was a common goal. You know, you survived to the next level, level, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. blah. But they never, 
they never capitalized on anything. It was just more like the deaths were meaningless. The, that like it, you know what I mean? It's kind of like Mike Myers in Halloween. Like the deaths don't mean anything. It's just Mike killing everybody. Yeah. Escape Room has that same kind of vibe where it's like they're just killing people, and there's really no storyline. They're just killing people, mm-hmm. and they don't they don't capitalize on who's doing it. They don't capitalize on why they're doing it. I the, think that's what they're going to explore in the third. The only element that we've got is that people pay to watch this shit. Do we know that? Yeah, they, they hinted at it in the second one that there's yeah. a lot of rich people that okay. make this happen. So it's like... Oh, I didn't even think about the purge. Oh, yeah, the purge is... Like, so I had two more I want to talk to you about that. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. so Escape Room, I think the dialogue's clunky. Mm-hmm. I don't think it flows like it should. I think the I think it's too cluttered. I think the the plot there's too many plots. There's too many things to follow, and so by the time you're trying to figure out the first three things that you just learned about, now you've got to learn about five, six, and seven. You're just like, what what happened to four? And then you, it, you just get so confused and so lost by the end of the movie when you find out that she the whole point of it was for her to figure it out and be on the plane for her to be the next planner. Is you're just like I don't care like this is so i'm over this because you've spent an hour and a half trying to figure out the first 30 things you learned so i'm gonna give escape room like yeah like a two or a three like it's they're horrible they're not they're not very entertaining and they're not entertaining they're confusing and boring okay anyway next (laughs) Because you kind of like those two. Purge is a 10 out of 10. I love the Purge films. The first yeah. one was actually kind of boring. I actually... The first one is boring compared yeah, to the rest. Well, okay. So if you watch if you watched the first Purge when it came out, it was cool. Yeah. Well, because they're introducing the concept, but there was so much more that you can do yeah. with that concept outside of the house. And then you find out. And then you're just like, whoa, that's what this looks like out here. Interesting. Yeah, so I think if you watch them chronologically, like if you watch them for the first time in the order they released, mm-hmm. they're a great series. They're a great film franchise yeah. because it introduces plenty of plot points. I think the newest one was actually probably the worst. I think it was getting too far away from the original premise. Yeah, I agree. Like the Forever Purge, okay, people just want to murder. It's like the Wild West. We weren't even in the Purge anymore. We were just about people killing because they want to. Right. It so, was a little bit too far removed from the concept, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. But it was still fun. It was fun. I think Election Day or... That one's my favorite. Yeah. Election Day was great or the uh, the prequel. The first purge? The, yeah. The, is that what it's called? The first purge? I think it was. It was the first purge, forever purge, Election Day, Anarchy, and the original. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. The, it was the one before this one. Yeah. So first purge. Yeah. The prequel to all the purges. Mm-hmm. That one was cool too because they were all locked on Staten Island or Long Island or one of those yeah, two. Yeah, it was the test subject. It was yeah, that island was the subject for the purge, and it was like that was cool. Like you saw like the beginning of it, and then Election Day was just like the freaking. I kind of want to know how like the person who suggested let's have a purge. That person got gunned down in that movie, in the first purge. Yeah. It's like how did this get implemented? When the person who thought of it got killed. How was that a successful test run? Because they did it and they're like, man, great. I just, that, that was strange to me. But yeah. Well, they did it because, well, actually, no one was trying. The, 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 the beauty of that movie, of the first Purge, was that like they showed a systematic breakdown of controlled chaos. That's why I'm saying, like, like how did it, it was get picked so, up as a nationwide It was thing? done so well because <laughs> they showed you, like, everybody wants peace and, oh, no, don't fight, don't kill, don't rob. Let's just dance and party in the streets. And then one gunshot goes off and it's fucking chaos. And it just shows you, like, how crazy shit can get. Mm-hmm. so quickly and it's cool because the first part of the movie you're like oh yeah it's great it's nothing but and you kind of know what's coming in the back of your mind but they paint it so well they're like oh yeah nothing's gonna happen it's gonna be fine and then literally they time it so well because 
it happens like that in real life too. Like when shit happens, it happens like that. It is so fast and so quick. And when, when stuff like that happens, man, it's just like, whoa. And the movie showed you that it's like, here we go. Zero to a hundred. Let's go. And it was, yeah, it was great. So I want to give the purge. Yeah. 10 out of 10. I love the purge films. I think some of them could have been better. I think this last one could have been better, but it is Mm -hmm. what it is. So the last franchise I'm going to bring up is one of my personal favorites. You've seen a few. I don't know what your take is. Okay. Resident Evil. Oh, I love those films. 10 out of 10. Really? Yeah, because... You Re- never told me that. Resident Evil isn't a horror film. It's it's not. I don't... It's, it's not. Zombies and viruses yeah, and worst case scenarios. It's and... not a horror film. It's an action film. It's not. It's not a horror film. <laughs> I don't know about it's, that. It's a video game. It's not a horror film. It's a thriller. A thriller slash action. It's not horror. The Walking Dead isn't horror. Yeah, it is. The Walking Dead is thriller and sci-fi. Then all horror is sci-fi to a degree. No, because like World War Z was an action film. That is so sci-fi. It's science. The Walking Dead is science fiction. Slasher films and all the horror films we've talked about are not science fiction. Those could really happen. Actually, (laughs) some of the films we talked about are based on true stories. Okay, so what do you think 28 Days Later is? Science fiction. It didn't happen. Something like that could happen. It didn't. They're not based in fact. Michael Myers is? Michael Myers is not based in fact. He's a a guy who sold his soul to the devil (laughs) and can't be killed and gets stronger when he kills. It's It's not real. It's a slasher. It's a horror film. So horror films, I would base on something that can't can't or wouldn't happen or could happen, but Jesus Christ. So you come up with a horror franchise that I haven't mentioned. A true horror by your definition. True, uh, a horror film or horror franchise? Franchise. <clears throat> franchise. What's the guy who ripped off people's skin? And like wore oh. them. Oh. That was Buffalo Bill from the Hannibal Lecter no, series. No, not the same thing. Uh, Talking he, Texas Chainsaw Massacre? No, he was a freaking like, he's like a, oh, It is a horror film. Horror franchise. It's it's a very long book that couldn't be made into one movie. Yeah, fair. Still. <laughs> um, What is the, what the freaking, no, he's, it's a weird name. He's like a bat spider thing. And he has Jeepers to... Creepers? Yeah. That's a horror franchise. Uh, debatable. It's it, not. Based on your definition. It's not real. Okay, so here's what I think of Jeepers Creepers. I think the concept is great. I think the second movie is horrendous. The execution is horrible. I think the first movie was compelling, <sighs> but not something you want to watch a million times over. Especially because, like... I think the reason I've seen it several times is because of the monster. The because that that pops up in mythology all the time. I can't remember what it is called, but it pops up in a lot of different horror. You also didn't mention the Scream franchise. How is that not thriller? It's horror and action and thriller by your definition. But no. Resident Evil is a video game based on things that could and never would happen. Okay, wh- what do you think of Scream then? What? What do you think of Scream then? It's horrible. <laughs> Have you seen any of I've them? I've seen one of them. Which it, one? I think it was the first one. I just didn't watch it all. I like. I was like, oh, this is stupid. And I quit. I stopped watching it. So Scream is awesome because they make fun of your typical horror trope. No, that I actually did find that kind of funny. Where it like was like, Wes Craven makes fun of horror movies. It's really fun to watch. Uh, and I believe that the reason they used that mask is because they wanted to use another mask that was, um, 
copyrighted or they copyrighted the scream mask so you can't like ghost face that's what they call it no so there is yeah ghost face so there's a there's a company in north carolina that made the mask and owns the rights to the mask so they can't make another scream film without paying this company who makes the mask in north carolina the rights to the licensing for the mask well they are making a fifth one yeah, well, it's, well, they're going to pay for it. It's fine. Yeah. But, I mean. What? Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay, my uh, my headphones died, so. <laughs> I, 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 like, literally clicked out when I, I was like, wait, I can't hear you anymore. So, but, yeah. So, I don't know. It's just, but, yeah. I, my, you know my top two franchises. It's. Apparently, you've got several up in there. You like Final Destination. You do. like Purge. I you do. like Conjuring. I do. You like Final Destination. I do. Yeah. Resident, Resident Evil is not really you considered. Didn't, you think Chucky is well executed. I take that as a win. I think Saul is well executed. Mm-hmm. I think it's just done. Yeah, mm. I think I think you can appreciate horror films more than you used I to be able to. I appreciate a lot of films. <laughs> But there are some that I'm just like, well, this is kind of shitty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, but yeah. I think Halloween was the first horror franchise that I actually got into, though. First one I got into was The Conjuring. It's the first that one I really sense. dived into. Because I, I was a ghost hunter. So, like, that was that was intriguing to me as seeing shit that was based on a true story. Like, I was drawn in by that. And then from there, it just kind of catapulted me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No, I think we've probably been at this for like an hour and a half. It's been 57 minutes. Oh, shit. So if you guys want to, put your favorite horror series in the comments below. And tell us if you think Final Des- uh, Resident Evil is actually a horror. It's or not. what you think it is. It's not. I'm going to look up Resident Evil right now. And I'm going to see what it's listed as. Because I could say, if anything, I'd say Final Destination is less horror than any of them. Because it that is... There's no villain there. Not really. Resident Evil is listed as... As... Son of a bitch. Okay, well, it's listed as... We're not, we're not actually... Technically, both of us are not wrong. It's listed as action Action's horror. Horror. Action, yeah. So I was right, you were right. It's fine. I mean, horror. sci-fi is not incorrect either. Oh, puppies. That's the thing with in this kind of area, you can hit several boxes on that. Yeah. So all right, well, yeah. Put it in the comments below. Hit the button. Like the thing. Uh. And we'll see you next time. Get spooky. What? <laughs> We're on theme here. Uh, I guess it is Halloween next week. When yeah. This, no, that's two weeks from now. This will be out this week, so it'll be two weeks from now when it Halloween. Cause Dude, today is the twenty second. We oh, have got nine days God. till Halloween. So Saturday is Halloween. Sunday is Halloween. Oh, jeez. Yeah, time's going oh, by quickly. Time flying by. And I'm getting older day by day. Okay. So um, we'll see you next time. And be safe. Have fun. Don't eat too much candy. And get spooky. Bye. Bye. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>